This is Rocky Mountain Voices, powered by PodTech. You're watching the Front Range Focus Show. Techstars is a summer experience for entrepreneurs. Uh, they get to come to Boulder, uh, build their product, get a little bit of funding, um, ten to fifteen thousand dollars, to come to Boulder, spend the summer. Uh, it's a mentorship-driven uh, investment model where we've got a bunch of great mentors that help them throughout the summer work on their ideas. They're primarily uh, software, web technology companies. And at the end of the summer, we organize uh, an investor day, and they get the chance to pitch their ideas to investors. David sat down and said, "I got this idea. I got this idea of getting a bunch of young entrepreneurs, you know, in Colorado for the summer." putting a small amount of funding together for them, but enough to get people going, and getting a bunch of people from the local entrepreneurial community engaged in helping these guys start up their companies. And we talked about it for, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. You maybe thought maybe you get five minutes, and I'd say, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, but it was great. And you know, I, I started my first company when I was 19, so the idea of getting involved with young entrepreneurs at the very beginning of their experience and their cycle is powerful. And I had plenty of help and good mentors early on, but they were sort of one-off relationships. Many of them were clients of, of my first company. Knowing the local entrepreneurial landscape and just how rich it is here in, in the Front Range of Colorado, the idea of getting a bunch of people in that mental community in an organized fashion around 10 companies or so was pretty exciting. And uh, we came out of that and said, hey, sounds like a great idea. Um, uh, I hooked David up with Jared Polis, who's another local entrepreneur and a good friend um, uh, and, and local investor, and uh, David's partner, David Brown, and his first company came along and the four of us got this thing going. I didn't have as much mentorship when I did my first company when I was uh, 22. Struggled through, bootstrapped it, figured out a lot of things, made a ton of mistakes, and just looking back on the gaps in my own experience, um, a program like this is just what people need uh, when they're first getting out there and figuring out how to build a company, so wanted to provide that. The thing that's fascinating to me is not just the volume of, of applications, but the quality of them. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I expected that you know, some meaningful percentage of the applications that we get would be you know, marginal at best, and it actually turns out that, that the vast majority were you know, at the minimum pretty interesting. And every, you know, everything had, ha has its issues because these are very early stage ideas, but um, if you just filtered on quality of the idea, articulation of the founder, potential opportunity, again, putting yourself in the position that these are very early stage, you know, typically first time entrepreneurs, pretty, I was pretty amazed at, at what we had to choose from. It was a pretty hard process, yeah. um, you know, to sit down. You know, David did a lot of the work on the front end of it in terms of narrowing it down into a manageable set for the four of us to sit and really hash out, you know, who we were going to extend invitations to. But it was, uh, it, it was not a, there was no lack of, you know, quality. And certainly we could have easily supported a much larger program, um, which was an interesting conversation that we had. But I think fundamentally part of the power of the experience is having enough critical mass, but not too much. Right. If you end up in a situation where you have 20 or 30 teams, you know, trying to go at the same time, you, you know, you're going to dilute the focus that they're going to get from the mentors. And we felt like the ratio of mentors to entrepreneurs with 10 teams was roughly the right max. Lots of really interesting ideas, lots of great ideas, and of course some wacky ones. Um, but, but really what stands out are the, are the people that um, are applying and what they've gone out and built um, without waiting for permission. And, uh, you know, that's what we're primarily looking for is, is the people. And the ideas are somewhat secondary. They have to be, you know, reasonable. But um, in the end, we're picking, we're picking great people, and that's what we ended up with. I think one, one of the things that, that we spent time thinking about was there was a lot of, there's been a lot of pressure to say, you know, who did you pick? And I think given the dynamics of these companies, um, you know, we want them to each have their own coming out party. Right? I mean, the coming out party is not about tech stars. It's about those companies. And um, for some of them, it's probably, you know, they're not ready for their coming out party. And for others, you know, by the time they get here this summer, they'll be ready. So it's interesting when, when you start to pay attention to them and see what's being announced this summer on the program. I think, you know, plenty of eyes will light up because there's, there's really some, some pretty cool stuff, both from a product perspective, um, some, some things that, you know, I, you know, as somebody who is actively looking across a lot of the markets that we saw applicants in, you know, there were a couple of them where we just hadn't thought of the idea before or seen the, you know, seen other companies doing it. So there's some truly unique stuff. Um, and then there's also just some people that are, you know, knock your socks off good, you know, in terms of 
you know, again, being relatively young on the curve, but just blew us away in terms of their, you know, ability to engage. I think six or seven of them are, again, in that consumer internet space. So they're, they're things like you know, social media, um, sharing, um, just those, those things that you see on the internet that consumers use. And then I think there are three or four that are doing, you know, on-demand business applications. Really, what, what we view um, as the value that we're getting for the 5% is um, a little bit of money um, and a lot of um, engagement in terms of human capital. So we really view Techstars as a co-founder of these companies, and we're helping the entrepreneurs get going through not just direct advice and involvement, um, but through you know the people that we're bringing to the table in terms of a broad base of mentorship. And the 5% that we're taking in the company, we're taking is essentially founder's equity. So we, we have common stock, there's no preferences, there's you know, no, no sort of special investor rights. We look just like another founder for that. And as part of that, we're putting up a little bit of capital. Um, we're providing infrastructure in that, but, but really that, that knowledge, experience, access to people, you know, I'm gonna guess that of the 10 companies that, that emerge, you know, any of them that end up um, you know, being fundable, you know, they're going to have a built-in, you know, serious first round of angel capital just from the mentor base that's interested in them, independent of any other investors that might be interested in, right? So it's, it's, it's not even access to capital, but access to people who are going to help form the idea and really provide huge amounts of value back to the entrepreneurs. So, you know, I think that the, if somebody's looking at it and saying, gosh, that's a really expensive round of financing, and they're just looking at the dollars, they're missing the point of the whole program. Um, and if it was just purely economics, I'd totally agree that if we added nothing, that that's a very expensive financing. But in the context of what we're bringing to the table, I think it's actually quite cheap. And I think the people that are coming, you know, feel strongly about that. Right. I think, I think to their credit, most people that have applied for this understand that and, and you know, aren't just doing it for the ten or $15,000. That's just uh, a way to get to Boulder and to, you know, to eat ramen noodles and survive while you're here. Um, you know, if, if they are looking at it just from the capital perspective, they are looking at it the wrong way. And in fact, I think that would probably keep them from getting in because they just don't, don't get the value of the program. So of all the 300 plus applicants, I think most of them understood, you know, what they were getting into and what the value was. For me personally, it's uh, just something that I think I'm going to really enjoy and it's going to be a lot of fun to, to be around um, energetic folks that are working on building businesses. Um, Certainly, uh, letting folks know that Boulder is uh, in the Boulder and Denver area, a great area for tech startups, um, and just being involved in, in the mental exercise of building new companies is just going to be a lot of fun. I love helping create companies. You know, the sweet spot of the type of stuff we do, um, you know, in our in our VC practices, early and seed stage companies, and personally, you know, again, I started my first company in nineteen, so the. The engagement at the very beginning of the creation of the business is exciting. And, you know, when you look at having a concentrated group of people in one place for a period of time that are all working on that, you know, it's just, it just, I mean, when David described his vision of it, it just sounded like a blast. You know, I, I typically spend a chunk of uh, the summer at my place in Alaska um, uh, with my wife. And we, you know, we've been going to Alaska for a dozen years and we, you know, spend four to eight weeks there each summer. This summer we're not going to go. We're just going to stay in Boulder and hang out. And, you know, enjoy being in Boulder, which will be fun, change of pace, but also a big driver of that is just being around this and, you know, seeing, seeing how it goes. The last thing I'd say is one of the things that's happened now that we've got the program up and running um, is we have a number of significant companies that are starting to um, be interested in partnering with us in this program. And we've got a decent sponsor base for it already, but, um, you know, you're getting some interesting different perspective from folks because it's a geographic market that's different than where they're already spending a lot of their time, right? You know, it's not yet another Silicon Valley thing that they've got to pay attention to and sponsor and support, but something a little off the beaten path. And um, uh, I think we'll be announcing some pretty interesting relationships with folks, you know, over the next couple of months building up to the summer that'll be really beneficial to many of these companies, both from a you know, service provider perspective, vendor perspective, technology perspective, um, and in some cases, true go-to-market activity. This has been a Rocky Mountain Voices podcast. Visit us online at RockyMountainVoices.com.